the hour of convening having arrived, all members of this house will please report to the floor and take seats. All members report to the floor of the house. All members of this house will please report to the floor. Mr. Clerk, ring the bell. We are now going to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Well, good morning. Happy Friday. We made it till Friday. Super Bowl weekend coming up. I hope the Lord lets me live long enough to see the Falcons in it one more time, but I don't know. We will begin our day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 145th House District, Representative Rick Williams. Representative Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. Gives me great pleasure to not only bring a pastor to you this morning, but also a friend, more like a brother. Reverend Larry Glover walked in my office in 1976 and said, I'm here to help you run ambulance service. I had just 24 years old and got the contract to run ambulance service for Baldwin County. He was a student at Georgia College. We were both kids, didn't have a clue what we were doing, but we worked seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Larry, uh, not a stranger to the Capitol, his father was Gene Glover, who was the warehouse manager for Tommy Irwin when he was uh, over the Department of Agriculture. His niece, Shannon Wallace, is a district attorney over in Cherokee County. And uh, Larry and I could probably write a book and make a couple of movies over the ambulance calls that we have run together and CPR and wrecks and drunks and I even had a few died from lead poisoning, and it wasn't a drinking lead, it was a shooting lead. But uh, anyway, uh, well, uh, it, I'm, I'm just honored to present him this morning. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm supposed to say Representative Williams, but I'm not. I'm going to say Rick because he is my brother. 
And thank you to the members of the house for allowing me to be here today. When I was a boy, my father's office was across the street in the agriculture building. There was a guy named Mr. Ford that was with the building authority. And if Mr. Ford found out that dad was bringing my brother and I to Atlanta, he came got us and he brought us over to the Capitol. I was able to walk in when the, you were not in session in this room and never had any idea that I would be able to come and speak before you today. And on one of those trips, I went into an office here. The gentleman was in a wheelchair, and he was our Secretary of State. His name was Mr. Ben Fortson, and since I was only about 40 pounds then, Mr. Ben picked me up, set me on his lap, and pointed to a leather sofa, as I remember being in his office. And he said, let me tell you about the day that Georgia had two governors. He said, I slept right there on that sofa and slept on the state seal so no business could be taken care of. He pointed out the features of that state seal, and there are three words in there I want to bring to your attention today. Wisdom, justice, and moderation. Gentlemen, ladies, I've got good news for you. You've got someone you can depend on. His name is God. First of all, wisdom is knowing the right way. Knowing what to do. When Rick was first elected, I saw him trying to learn the ropes. He asked a lot of questions. He's made a lot of friends, and I've got to stop and say that I am very proud of him. And our work together over the years has been one thing that we've tried to do. Look to the Lord. Do it right. Do what he would have us do. Justice is not only knowing the right thing, but doing the right thing. There's no gray areas. It is said of King David in Scripture, and David reigned over all of Israel. And David executed judgment and justice to all people, doing the right thing. God gave us a standard. It's real simple. The laws that you pass today are based on the laws that God gave us. It's found in Exodus 20. Ten little verses. It's called the Ten Commandments. Do what's right. And then the last word today in our state motto that has guided this nation to greatness. To be a shining light in the United States of America as to what a state should be is moderation. I like to say that moderation is living the right way. When my father brought me to the Capitol, and in his whole life he always tried to teach us, now look, there's somebody watching you. He would try to teach us, now, son, your word is your bond. He taught us that there is one way to live, and that's the right way. I walked in the door this morning, and I could hear his voice. I walked in the door this morning, and I had so many memories of so many things that's going on in Georgia. And I've got to say that this House of Representatives is one of the strongest that I've ever seen, and I'm proud of you. Let's continue to live our lives in such a way that when our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and when history says that you have done a good job and you have done the right thing, let's pray. Lord God, we come before you today to ask for your strength, your wisdom, your guidance. That everything we accomplish this day, we will bring glory and honor to you. Blessings to this state, our nation, and the people that have sent us here. Protect us, O oh Lord. Provide for us and keep us in your will. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. The chair recognizes Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journal of the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection? to the confirmation of the journal. The chair hears none and the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. Burns, owner 59th moves following the establishes the order of business during the first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of house bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Report of standing committees. Morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 853 by Representative Knight of the 130th Corporate of the 174th, Perkle the 155th, Meeks of the 178th, and Rose of the 120th. Bill being titled Act to amend Article 3, Chapter 2, Title 40, the official code of Georgia and its entry relating to prestige license plates. Motor vehicles. House Bill 854 by Representative Rutledge, 109. Powell, 32nd. Petrie, the 166th. Stevens, 164th. And Clark, the 147th. Bill being titled an act of men, Chapter 60, Title 36 of the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated, relating the general provisions applicable to counties and municipal corporations. Governmental Affairs. House Bill 855 by Representative Weedower, 119th. Jasper's the 11th. Gaines, the 117th. McCall, the 33rd. Reeves, the 34th. And others. Bill be titled an act to amend part three of article six of chapter two of title 20. The official code of Georgia annotated relating to educational programs. Education. House bill 856 by Representative Sharper, the 177th. Bill be entitled an act to amend an act to establish a system of public schools for the city of Valdosta. Intergovernmental coordination. House Bill 857 by Representative Apollo, 32nd McCall, 33rd Jasper, the 11th. Bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 9 of Title 12 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to prevention and control of air pollution. Natural resources and environment. House Bill 858 by Representative McLaurin of the 51st, Wilson of the 80th, and Silcox of the 52nd. Bill being titled an act to amend Code Section 17554. The official code of Georgia annotator relating to definitions and disposition of personal property. Judiciary non-civil. House Bill 859 by Representative Perkle of the 155th Corporate of the 174th Saints of the 180th and Hatch of the 150th. Bill being titled an act to amend code section 4873.1 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to tinting of windows and windshields. Public safety and homeland security. House Bill 860 by Representative Williams, 145th and Rose, 120th. Bill being titled an act to provide for non-binding advisory referendum for the purpose of ascertaining when the electors of Putnam County desire the Putnam County Board of Commissioners to levy. 
Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 861 by Representative Weedauer, the 119th, Jones, the 47th, rivalry, the 67th, Gaines, the 117th, Department of the 5th, and others. A bill being entitled an act to amend Chapter 1 of Title 40, the Fish Code of Georgia Annotator, relating to identification and regulation of motor vehicles. Motor vehicles. House Bill 862 by Representative Kendrick of the 93rd, Caldwell of the 20th, Moore of the 95th, Jones of the 25th, and Allen of the 40th, and others. Bill being taught on that to amend Chapter 3, Title 35, the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated, relating to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Public Safety and Homeland Security. House Bill 863 by Representative Turner, the 21st, a bill being titled an act to amend Code Section 33321.1 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotator relating to the submission of reports. Insurance. House Bill 864 by Representative Rich in the 97th, Green in the 151st, Silcox in the 52nd, Cooper the 43rd, Stevens in the 164th, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 11 of Title 48 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotator relating to taxes on tobacco products. Ways and Means. House Resolution 1008 by Representative Green in the 151st, Jackson in the 128th, next to the 69th, Taylor in the 173rd, and Smith in the 70th. A resolution urging the State Board of Pardons and Paroles to issue a posthumous pardon for Susan Eberhardt. Public Safety and Homeland Security. House Resolution. 1023 by President Welsh to the 110th, Abstration to the 104th, Fleming to the 121st, Trammell to the 132nd, Kelly the 16th, and others. A resolution proposing an amendment to the Constitution is to provide that the people of the state may petition the judiciary. Judiciary. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 742 by Representative Trammell of the 132nd, Clark of the 98th, and Singleton of the 71st, a bill relating to vacation of office. House Bill 839 by Representative Jones of the 25th, Brookheiser of the 157th, Park of the 101st, Hill of the 3rd, Holly of the 111th, and others, a bill relating to employment security. House Bill 840 by Representative Weedauer of the 119th, Gaines of the 117th, Kelly of the 16th, Sains of the 180th, and Jones of the 47th, a bill relating to non public post secondary educational institutions. House Bill 841 by Representative Scoggins of the 14th, Gamble of the 15th, and Kelly of the 16th, a bill to amend an act to provide a homestead exemption from certain Bartow County ad valorem taxes. House Bill 842 by Representative Williams of the 145th, Jackson of the 128th, Mathis of the 144th, Gravely of the 67th, Powell of the 32nd, and others, a bill relating to general provisions regarding health. House Bill 843 by Representative Douglas of the 78th, Trammell of the 132nd, Fry of the 118th, Hawkins of the 27th, Walensky of the 79th, and others, a bill relating to miscellaneous provisions under the Quality Basic Education Act. House Bill 844 by Representative Gallet of the 19th, Knight of the 130th, Yerta of the 152nd, Earhart of the 36th, Mathis of the 144th and others, a bill relating to general provisions regarding ad valorem taxation of property, House Bill 845 by Representative Glanton of the 75th, Nix of the 69th, Stovall of the 74th, and Belton of the 112th, a bill relating to conditions of employment in elementary and secondary education. House Bill 846 by Representative Corbett of the 174th, Harold of the 106th, Carson of the 46th, Kelly of the 16th, Williamson of the 115th, a bill relating to revenue and taxation. House Bill 847 by Representative Corbett of the 174th, McCall of the 33rd, Dickey of the 140th, Pruitt of the 149th, Gilliard of the 162nd, a bill relating to hemp farming. House Bill 848 by Representative Blackman of the 146th, Williams of the 145th, Thumson of the 12th, Taylor of the 173rd, Shannon of the 84th, and others, a bill relating to disposition of surplus property. House Bill 849 by Representative Douglas of the 78th, Trammell of the 132nd, Hawkins of the 27th, Powell of the 32nd, Howard of the 124th, and others, a bill relating to care and protection of indigent and elderly patients. House Bill 850 by Representative Ridley of the 6th, Harold of the 106th, Jaspers of the 11th, Tarvin of the 2nd, Gravely of the 67th, and others, a bill relating to sales and use taxes. House Bill 851 by Representative Reeves of the 34th, and Illowitz of the 42nd, Sets of the 35th, Williams of the 37th, Dollar of the 45th, and others, a bill to amend an act creating the State Court of Cobb County. House Bill 852 by Representative Glanton of the 75th, a bill relating to lands acquired, owned, leased, controlled, or occupied by local governments deemed for public purposes and effect on ad valorem taxation. House Resolution 874 by Representative Trammell of the 132nd and Clark of the 98th, a resolution proposing amendment to the Constitution to the State of Georgia so as to provide for the suspension of the salary of certain suspended public officials. Three second readers. Reports of standing committees. The clerk will read. Representative Barry Fleming on the 
Maryland 21st District Chairman of the Committee on Judiciary submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Judiciary is under the consideration of the following bill of the House. This instructs me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendation. House Bill 538 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Barry Fleming of the 121st District Chairman. A representative of abstration of the 104th District Chairman of the Committee on Judiciary Non Civil submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Judiciary Non Civil has that under consideration the following bill of the House. It has instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendation. House Bill 759 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Abstration of the 104th District and Chairman. Representative Ballinger, the 23rd District Chairman of the Committee on Juvenile Justice, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Juvenile Justice has had under consideration the following bills of the House. It's instructed me to report the same back to the House with following recommendation. House Bill 555, do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Ballinger, the 23rd District Chairman. Representative Kevin Tanner, the 9th District Chairman of the Committee on Transportation, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Transportation has had under consideration the following bill in resolution of the House. And instructed me to report the same back to the House with the following recommendation. House Resolution 935 do pass. House Bill 820 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Kevin Tanner of the 9th District Chairman. That completes the reports of standing committees. We're going on now to morning orders. Going on to morning orders. Chair is going to limit morning orders this morning to one minute each. One minute each. Chair recognizes. Representative Wayne Howard for a morning order. Good morning. My first time at, to the wheel this year, this session, so I think it's uh, for a good reason. I have spent 34 of my years with a young lady that has supported me when I wasn't able to support myself. <clears throat> and I want to uh, acknowledge her and wish her a happy anniversary tomorrow. My wife, the love of my life. Chair recognizes Chairman Darlene Taylor for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we celebrate the birthday of a world-class athlete, a World War II veteran, and a generous Georgian, Jack Roosevelt Robinson, known as Jackie Robinson. He was born in Cairo, Georgia in 1919 to a family of sharecroppers and grew up to be the first baseball player to break Major League Baseball's color barrier that segregated the sport for more than 50 years. His jersey number, number 42, is regarded as one of the most famous numbers in baseball history. In 10 seasons, he had a high batting average of 311 and his on-base percentage was 409. He led the Dodgers to six World Series and one World Series championship in a 10-year span. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1962, his first year of eligibility, and is an NAACP prestigious Springard uh, medalist. Although he was a great baseball player, his character and willingness to stand up for change is what he is best known for. We are proud in Cairo that our Boys and Girls Club carries his name and where his ideals are carried on. 
Jackie Robinson is hailed as one of the best baseball players of all time and an American civil rights hero. Let us all take this day to celebrate this extraordinary Georgian's accomplishments in life. Happy birthday, Jackie Robinson. Chair recognizes Representative McLeod for a morning order. Okay, members need to be on the floor if they have signed up for a morning order. Chair recognizes Representative Doreen Carter for a morning order. Chair recognizes Representative Hutchinson for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. Today I'd like to introduce you to Jonathan. Jonathan is a sweet 15-year-old boy. He is honest, loving, and he loves playing and watching football. His favorite team is the Georgia Bulldogs. Jonathan also enjoys riding his bike, playing video games, using his tablet, listening to rap music, playing Monopoly, and watching action movies. Jonathan is one of the over 2,000 children who are available for adoption today in Georgia. Let's say hello to Jonathan. Thank you, and I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Glanton for a morning order. Good morning, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, and happy Friday. Tomorrow, Mr. Speaker, the official start of Black History Month begins. And so, I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom and justice in the history of our nation. To fling my arms wide in some place of the sun to dance and to whirl until that bright day is done. Then to rest a cool evening beneath a tall, slim tree while night comes on gently, dark like me. This is my hope. This is my dream. To fling my arms wide in some place of the sun, to dance, to whirl, to whirl until the bright day is done. Then, to rest a cool evening beneath a tall, slim tree, while night comes on gently, black like me. I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes. But I laugh, ha ha, and I eat well, and I grow strong. Tomorrow, Brother Al, they won't dare send me to the kitchen when company comes. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I, too, am America. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield the well. Mark. Chair recognizes Chairman Newton for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, colleagues, uh, a dis disappointing fact uh, was determined during our study committee on maternal mortality. But one of the intriguing things, that's where Georgia ranks very high in that. One of the intriguing things, though, is 60% of the pregnancy-related deaths are potentially preventable. That was one of the highlights that we, we determined. And the 41% of Georgians and many of our African-American citizens are especially high risk for maternal mortality. You all know that study committees during the, our off-season uh, provide a, an opportunity for us to learn, for us to, to study what's going on in our state. 
They also provide a spotlight on all the different organizations that are working. I will tell you, our, our multiple meetings we had on maternal mortality did shine a spotlight on some great people and organizations that are working across Georgia to improve our standing in maternal mortality. Some of these, like our people at the Department of Public Health, our maternal mortality review committee that's been working for several years, established by our speaker in this body. Uh, one of the others is Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies, one that I'm especially proud of is I co-chaired the committee uh, with who Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies is determined was their advocate of the year for 2019, and that was Chairman Sher Sharon Cooper. We heard from providers all over the state who gave us great suggestions on how we can improve outcomes for these mothers in every zip code in our state. I want to encourage us to continue to work as legislators, as fellow legislators, to ensure we prioritize the health of mothers and their children and ensure that all Georgians are educated on their health care options available to them and that they each have the access to quality health care that they deserve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative McLeod. Thank you, Speaker Ralston. Big up to my colleagues. Let me finish up here. In this budget, we will be contributing to mass incarceration by decreasing the budget to the departments that will provide resources for employment and rehabilitation by almost $57 million. At this time in the United States of America that leads in prison population, even though it accounts for less than 5% of the world's population. With this budget, we are supposed to face our constituents and tell them that this budget is a reflection of what we value. I think not. In this year, in this session, in this room, we can create a budget that benefits the people who we serve, our employers, the people of the state of Georgia. They deserve a return on their investment. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Carter for a morning order. Going once, twice. All right, Chair recognizes Representative Wynn to introduce the Doctor of the Day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today we have with us Dr. Florence LaCroix. Dr. LaCroix was an anesthesiologist for 33 years and continues to practice at Northside Riverdale Outpatient Imaging Center. In 2014, she returned to academics in the field of health economics. She is an adjunct professor at the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies at Georgia State, my alma mater. And her, her research focus is medical liability, patient safety, and physician burnout. So maybe she can give us some tips on lawmaker burnout. Yes? <laughs> Dr. Lacroix is a member of the American Medical Association, the Medical Association of Georgia, and the Medical Association of Atlanta, where she serves on the board of directors. Thank you so much. Um, I am an anesthesiologist. I am very fortunate to have Julia Mack, an experienced nurse. Julia, wave your hand. Okay. Um, helping me today. My expertise is in getting you safely through the surgical procedure. If any of you are having, or a loved one, are having surgery in the next several months, feel free to come by me. I will tell you the new recommendations from the American Society of Anesthesiologists and the American College of Surgeons that you can do to help you decrease your risk of surgical complications and heal faster. I, it is um, an honor to serve you today, especially because you do so much to help the people of our state. Thank you for all you do. Good to see you too.
Clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. Recognizing and commending the Georgia High School Fencing League and its member teams, honoring the life and memory of Dr. James C. Metz, Jr. Commemorating the Keep Georgia Beautiful Foundation and more than 70 local Keep America Beautiful affiliates across the state. Commending the Dacula High School Lady Falcons soccer team for winning the 2019 6A state championship. Congratulating Hebron Chris Christian Academy's volleyball team for winning the 2019-2020 GHSA Class A AA Private State Volleyball Championship. Recognizing and commending Habitat for Humanity. Recognizing and commending International Women of Hope. Recognizing April 2020 as Celebrate Diversity Month. Recognizing and commending Georgia Supreme Court Justice Robert Benham upon the grand occasion of his retirement. Recognizing the week of February 3rd is Jewish Genetic Screening Awareness Week in Georgia. Honoring the life and memory of Bishop Quincy Lavelle Carswell. Commending the city of College Park and recognizing February 6, 2020 is College Park Day at the State Capitol. And for other purposes, that completes the reading of the privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none and the resolutions are adopted. We have one birthday between now and when we're back on Monday, Representative Kevin Cook celebrating a birthday tomorrow. We have one announcement. Chair is going to remind members if you have pages here today, you need to report up to the rostrum right now because we're not going to go looking for you. If you want you to have your picture made with your page, Chair recognizes Representative Abel Mabel Thomas for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise today as uh, vice chair of the Civil Atlanta delegation. And what I want to remind people is that on today, uh, we, are, we will be meeting uh, after adjournment, after adjournment, by 11.30, we say 11.30, in room uh, 307 of the LOB. It will be members of the Civil Atlanta delegation as well as members of the Fulton County uh, delegation as well. We're meeting together today at 1130-307 LOB. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think that's all of our announcements. You might want to listen to this motion. Chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Mr. Speaker, I move that this House stand adjourned until 1 p.m. Monday, February the 3rd, 2020. I wish you'd let me make that motion as popular as it was. The majority leader has moved that this House be adjourned until Monday, February 3rd, 2020 at 1 o'clock p.m., 1 p.m. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it and this House will be adjourned until Monday, February 3rd at 1 o'clock p.m.